Hello, welcome to Senior Living Today. I'm your host, Scott Buchanan, CEO for the Ohio Masonic Home. Each episode, we take a closer look at the complicated world of senior living and help you understand what kind of services to look for, what questions to ask, and what you can do now to financially prepare for your future. As you all may know, there isn't a handbook or a how-to guide when it comes to navigating this complex world of senior living. So we're here to help. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at lifelong learning opportunities available to you and your loved ones at senior living communities. I will be joined by three different guests. Each will give us their unique perspective when it comes to senior living and lifelong learning opportunities. After the break, I will be joined by Molly Good, Community Relations and Sales Manager for the Browning Masonic Community in Waterville, Ohio, who's gonna share with us a new program she started at Browning called New You. Please stay with us. Hi Kelly, what's for lunch today? We have our lentil soup, we have our corn chowder, and we have our spicy buffalo chicken meatball soup. Hey, what do you think about that guy named Dave over there? Oh, he's a catch. You should totally go for it. Think I already get its digits? Absolutely. At Springfield Masonic Community, you're more than just a job title. To start your rewarding career, visit us at ohiomasonichome.org today. Welcome back to Senior Living Today. I'm your host, Scott Buchanan, and I'm joined by Molly Good, Community Relations and Sales Manager from the Browning Masonic Community. Molly, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, Molly, tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Well, professionally, I have been in the senior living industry for over 10 years now. Wow. Um, in the first eight years of those, I was really focused more on the healthcare side of things. Uh, before I made the jump to Ohio Masonic Home, I was really looking for that piece where we could help fulfill the lives of individuals daily um, by way of programming. So I'm really uh, thankful for the opportunity to come on board and be able to do that with the Ohio Masonic Homes up in the uh, Waterville area, up in wow. Northwest Ohio. Uh, personally, a little bit about myself. Um, I have been married for seven years to an awesome guy. Uh, we are settled in Northwest Ohio and I've got two beautiful little girls who are three and a half and 13 months. Wow. So yep, life busy. is, it is, it's very busy, but all great things. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. So you've worked at multiple senior living communities. What kind mm -hmm. of lifelong learning programs have you seen in, in your experience and and why do we offer those? Why do, why do senior facilities offer lifelong learning? Absolutely. So I started off um, in this market, uh, but I did end up moving over to Cleveland and I moved over to Northwest Ohio where I am currently. Uh, so having that breadth of experience uh, gives me the ability to really learn a lot about what the best lifelong learning programs are, what classes are most attended, and what a person or a potential student could value in those courses. So a little bit about those classes in particular, and those classes can range from anything, Scott, to personal finance. Oh, wow. um, it can range for um, to entertainment classes. So if you want to learn more about bartending or if you want to learn more about <laughs> other things, you have the ability to do that through lifelong learning. The class is what you make it and uh, the class is really kind of catered to, especially in that region, what those people are interested in learning about, whether it be local history or learning a little bit more about skin care as our skin continues to age. What are we going to do to kind of fight that proactively? So you recently started a program at Browning called New You. Yes. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about the program that we've started and is it open to everyone? Is it just community members? at Browning? Is it open to the, the, the whole community in Waterville? What's that like? Sure. So New You is a program that we developed in partnership with the Mommy Senior Center. Okay. We found that individuals have a tendency not to want to go to their local senior center because of distance. Okay. So we found in the region where we are, people like to stay on the one side of the river. So we partnered with the Senior Center in order to give New You the formality it needed to succeed as a lifelong learning program. So what that does for us is that allows us to offer fitness classes. It allows us to offer all sorts of things that folks okay. would travel to the Mommy Senior Center for, but to offer it locally to that community. And the programs we've been able to offer through that are local history courses. We're right okay. there on the Great Lake of Lake Erie, so we're <laughs> able to see um, all of the interesting facts about how the canal used to go right through Waterville. Um, we've done courses on that. We've done courses on local history. We've done courses on skin care. You name it, any class under the sun we've done over at Browning with so UU. Of those programs, are we going to offer those same types of programs in the future, you think, or do they change? Absolutely, yes. So the courses do change kind of depending on what a person's interested in. And when we piloted this program back in April of 2019, we've done two semesters <laughs> so far, we've got them under our belt. Uh, we did a lot of the personal finance classes and just different health and medical affairs classes. And people started saying, 
we want to do more <laughs> educational entertainment. So we started to do those courses. And as a matter of fact, in the fall semester, we had a wonderful class where we were able to give um, our students a firsthand experience of what it was like to do the 1969 moon landing. Wow. So you put the simulator on, and it gave a person a firsthand experience with three of your five senses of what it was like to land on the moon with Neil Armstrong. Wow. So do these programs... Um cost anything? Are they free to the, the residents? What, is that, what does that work like? How does that look? Sure. So the classes that we are able to offer at Browning are offered at a free or reduced cost. Okay. The great advantage that you have to working with a lifelong program that's happening in a senior community is we realize that folks in retirement are on a budget. So we okay. do have the opportunity and availability to make those classes free of charge or for a, a much reduced cost. Okay. So we've talked a lot about lifelong learning. And we talked a little bit on one of our other episodes about the different levels of care, independent living, assisted living. Mm -hmm. Are these programs open to everyone? Or are they open to just certain levels of care? What's that, what's that look like? Scott, it's a big mission of Browning Masonic Community and the Ohio Masonic Home that it does not matter where you lay your head to rest at night. Anybody of any availability or any ability Great. is able to attend these courses. So we open make it to friendly everyone. For, open to everyone. We do have one requirement, 50 or better. Awesome. Okay. So, do you have a success story you could share? We talked about the, the mm -hmm. lunar landing. Is there any mm -hmm. other success story from, the, from these programs that you could share with us? Yes, um, we did have, when we were in the course development for the first semester, we interviewed with a gentleman at a fair, believe it or not, that really? was local in town. And he was doing a big display on Vietnam and the photojournalism that ha wow. happened within it. So it was really interesting to kind of see how folks would interact with this gentleman's booth and uh, the knowledge that he had about the Vietnam era and and how the media happened to cover the war. And uh, a touching story that happened while I was standing right there was a gentleman with his Vietnam vet hat came on. He squatted down to look at the picture and tears welled up in his wow. eyes. And he said, Molly, I was there that day. Wow. I was there when that picture was taken <laughs> of this particular incident. And I couldn't tell you what it was because I was crying by this point <laughs> and uh, I was very touched. So I feel like a wonderful thing about lifelong learning is you are going to come. You are going to do something new. You're going to have a new beginning. You're going to have a new experience. But you're also going to create lasting bonds and connections with right. people. So if that's something that you're craving from a social aspect, you can bet that these lifelong learning programs are going to deliver on wow. that. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell someone looking for a senior living community for their loved one or for themselves? Absolutely. My well, biggest soapbox is research. Do your research. There might be a really good option in town, but that might not be for you. There are so many communities who have the resources and all of the different connections. But again, at the end of the day, if that's not for you, it's not for you. Go on a lot of tours. Get plugged into these lifelong learning programs. So really programs. do your homework. Do your homework. Yes, yes. And, you know, for people who sit at the desk every day, <laughs> I really don't mind if you come on a tour ten times and then you decide that something else is right for you. I know my option's the best one, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, I, but I want somebody to be absolutely sold that this is the best decision for them. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. us, Molly. Thanks Absolutely. A lot. Yes, thank Thanks you so much. There. Thank you, Scott. When we come back, I will be joined by Maureen Fagans. We'll be right back. All right, Mary, we're going to pick out your outfit for today, okay? Oh, I like that. Hey, what do you think about the Ave over there? Think I already get its digits? Absolutely. Good morning, Faye. Hi, John. Are you on those filters again? Yep. At Springfield Masonic Community, you're more than just a job title. To start your rewarding career, visit us at ohiomasonichome.org today. Welcome back to Senior Living Today. I'm your host, Scott Buchanan. I'm now joined by Maureen Fagans, Executive Director and CEO of United Senior Services. Maureen, thank you for being here today. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. So Maureen, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. How long have you worked with United Senior Services and, and what's your current role? Certainly. I'm, uh, I have been with United Senior Services for seven years. I am the Chief Elder Officer uh, of all things at our agency. Uh, professionally, I came from an urban planning background. I, really? That's what my degree is in. I worked for a real estate developer, um, actually doing mixed use kinds of uh, construction projects. Really? And had the opportunity to work on a master planning project at a senior living community. Wow. which was my introduction. I like Chief, Chief Elder Officer. Can I use that? You like that? that? <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that's how, that was my introduction. And uh, 
I was working in Springfield in another role when the uh, job became available wow. at United Senior Services. So uh, here we are. Here we are today. And Absolutely. I'm very happy well, to... Thanks for being here. You're very welcome. What kind of classes and programs do you offer at United Senior Services? So United Senior Services is has been an agency in business as Elderly United for 51 years. Wow. Um, the bulk of our budget, more than 75% of our budget, is service delivery okay. in the home. So Meals on Wheels, Homemakers, oh, yeah. Personal Care Aids, and Medical Transportation so are the big three. Uh, right, so the, that's the bulk of our budget. But, um, so we're providing those supportive services to people who need, th need that okay. help in order to maintain their independence. On the other end of the spectrum, the younger olders are the people that uh, come to our centers. We have five facilities around Clark wow. County. Uh, for recreation, fitness, and education. And so uh, uh, that can range. It used to be uh, travel and bingo and playing <laughs> cards. Now it is still travel and bingo and playing <laughs> cards, but the majority of, uh, of it is fitness. It's exercising and recreation, physical recreation, like okay. pickleball, pickleball and, and Everybody cycling plays pickleball. clubs. <laughs> yes, that's right. And lifelong learning. So we, we, uh, we like to think, we see ourselves as a wellness center. Okay. And so we uh, work very hard at uh, providing programming that touches on all of the dimensions of wellness. So you've actually partnered with Springfield Masonic Community on some lifelong learning programs. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about what that partnership's been like? Certainly. Uh, a number of years ago, as a way to organize our lifelong learning, we decided to put it all under one umbrella. Okay. And it became very popular just by being able to do that. Um, as a result, we formed an advisory council so that we okay. could uh, professionalize and formalize some of the education that we were offering. And that's how uh, we brought Masonic community into uh, onto the Advisory Council, along with uh, Wittenberg University and Clark State um, Community College, uh, so Historical really Society. A lot of organizations partnering together and, that's exactly and right. collaborating. Then. That's right. And we hosted it in our facility. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we actually came up with a name. We call it the SAIL Program, Okay. Springfield Area Institute for Lifelong Learning. It, okay. Uh, it uh, fulfills a, a gap in services in our community. Uh, many larger communities do have lifelong learning programs at their universities, and we did not have that. So uh, this was a, a way so to really provide now it. now we do, right? And now we do. Is there a typical cost for these classes? Is it uh, free? How does that work? Some of the classes are free, and the other costs, uh, and when there is a cost, we try to keep it very nominal. We don't want cost to be a barrier to anybody being able okay. to participate. Do you have a success story you could share with us, something that comes to mind as far as uh, the relationship and, and or programming? Uh, well, our, I have to say that uh, probably our biggest success, well, no, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to back up because there's a lot of them. But one of our, our uh, big successes is our partnership with Masonic. Um, right. They have been um, um, a door opener for a number of very good classes that we've been able to offer. As a result of some of that door opening in the early days, we now have a very robust um, uh, lifelong learning program. Awesome. Yeah. So what would you tell someone looking for a senior facility for themselves or for a family one or a loved one? What would you tell them to, to look for? Um, well, I'd tell them uh, to certainly investigate. Okay. Understand what it is you want in your living situation. And, um, and then investigate, investigate, and investigate <laughs> some more. I also would recommend that you make those decisions while you're still able to. Okay. I think sometimes the biggest frustration that an elder might have is um, moving into a facility that th they don't feel was their choice. And so uh, in many ways and in many aspects of living, we tell seniors, be in charge of that decision Yes. make those decisions early from Absolutely. advanced directives to living situation. Um, I have a good friend that called me recently. Her mom 
suddenly had to move from being at home into a facility and it's all right. new and now she's got all these questions. So right. that sounds great. Right. Um, Maureen, thank you for being here and for being on the show today. I really valued your insight and appreciate your continued partnership. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. You're very welcome. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. When we come back, I'll be joined by our final guest, Don Muncy, a community member of the Springfield Masonic community who's going to share his unique story of how he is a self-taught artist and is using those skills to teach other community members every single day. Please stay with us. <laughs> Good morning, Faye. Hi, John. Come look at this. <laughs> Are you on those filters again? Yep. <laughs> at Springfield Masonic Community, you're more than just a job title. To start your rewarding career, visit us at ohiomasonichome.org today. Welcome back to Senior Living Today. I'm your host, Scott Buchanan, and I'm joined by Don Muncy, a community member of the Springfield Masonic Community. Don, thanks for joining me today. Good to be here, Scott. So, Don, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first, I've been blessed with a, a long life, an uh, interesting life, and uh, over 38 years of it was in aviation, wow. field aviation. But uh, and I also was married almost 78 years. Were you really? Till my wife passed away a couple months ago. I'm sorry to hear that. But anyway, we were both Springfielders. We, we grew up within two miles of the Masonic home. Really? Snyder Park, junior high, then the high school. Uh, after we graduated, I joined the Navy. Navy? Yeah. I had done six months of work in a machine shop, and that wasn't for me. So, <laughs> so I joined the Navy. Anyway, I went through boot camp in uh, Aviation Machinist May School in Jacksonville, Florida. And after graduating there, I was assigned to PBY Squadron. Okay. The old P boats, you've heard of the old Dumbos. But uh, I uh, became a flight engineer. Okay, wow. And we, it was a training squadron, training pilots and navigators. But uh, when uh, after Pearl Harbor, this was before Pearl Harbor, but after Pearl Harbor, uh, we we were assigned sub patrol, so we used to fly the Gulf Stream. Uh, it was called a. Uh, they put another name on it later, the Triangle, yeah. the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, we wow. flew we flew into it before it was the Bermuda, <laughs> Bermuda Triangle. And you came back. <laughs> yeah, I came back. But anyway, uh, we done that for a few months, and then uh, that's about the time that the the Solomon Island campaign, Guadalcanal, was going on, and. Uh, we well, decommissioned our squadron, and all the flight crews were going to the Pacific. Okay. But my commanding officer called me up to his office one day and said, how would you like to go to traffic control school? <laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out of here, huh? So I went to Kansas City with a CAA school, went to traffic control school. Okay. And he, incidentally, he said, I might, there might be a good future in that. <laughs> I had 38 years of it. <laughs> Anyway, we had a, I had a great career in, in, uh, in uh, aviation. Uh, after I got out of the service, I'd done six years in the Navy, and uh, I joined the reserves then, but I wanted to protect my rating. But uh, I came to Columbus, was my first civilian job, Port Columbus, Port in the control Columbus. tower. And then I moved to Dayton. I was in Dayton here for a couple years. Really? Air traffic control, eh? Air traffic control. And then we opened a new tower in Lansing, Michigan. I went to Lansing. Wow. You've been all over. So you've served in wars and traveled the country all over. How did you end up such an amazing artist in, in, at the Springfield Masonic community? Well, that's, that's a long story, too. Anyway, <laughs> after I got out of that, after I retired, I retired and uh, I was in California at the time. Okay. We built a home up in, the, we like the Sierra, we like the mountains, so we built a home up in the mountains, my wife and I. Okay. And... Uh, I told her, uh, you know, I'd, when I was in high school, I'd done a lot of mechanical drawing and blueprints and that sort of thing, but I always wanted to do some real artwork. So I, I heard there was a, a gentleman who was a, a retiree from uh, Disney Studios. Really? Yeah, he was an illustrator, Hal Kraust. He was a graduate of the art, the Chicago Art Institute. He was a great artist, though, in addition to drawing Mickey wow. Mouse, he could really draw. Wow. <laughs> and he could paint. So I studied privately with him for a year. Okay. And that started me off. And uh, he, about eight years, let's see, about 13 years later, we moved down into a little town called Sonora. It's still in the 
California foothills. Okay. And I painted there, and uh, they got, I'd never done any uh, instructing, but anyway, they said, would you like to instruct for us? I said, sure. So I painted wow. there and instructed. We finally decided to move back to Springfield after being gone 58 years. <laughs> but my mother, years. <laughs> yeah, my mother, my mother, my mother was a resident at, in the home here, and uh, she was becoming aged. So we decided to come back and spend a couple years with her, which I did, and uh, before she passed away. But when I came back here, uh, I asked uh, at the home, uh, "Do you have any kind of an art instruction?" And he said, "No." I said, "Well, I'd be glad to volunteer." Great. So that was in, in uh, '98. Wow. So we, with the help of the uh, activities uh, department, we, we organized, a, and I had 15 people to start off with the, with the class. Wow. And uh, I've been teaching there ever since. So you've That's, been teaching a long time. Yeah, and I've enjoyed it too. And of course, the opportunity to, to paint myself in addition to uh, teaching, that was what a... What's was your great. favorite subject to paint? What do you like to paint the best? Well, we, my wife and I both were nature lovers. We liked uh, mountains and deserts, and we traveled a lot. We traveled all over the world, really. And uh, she was a, incidentally, she was a, she studied in Japan. She was a Japanese flower ranger. And uh, so we both enjoyed nature. And uh, I liked, I go for landscapes pretty much. I do a few portrait work, but mostly landscapes. What's your favorite to teach? A little bit of everything, or do you have a favorite? Uh, well, I'm teaching in acrylics as far as the medium, but uh, I teach pr pretty much landscape painting. That's, that's well, I actually have a painting in my office from a gentleman you taught how to paint of a hawk. Who? It was Bill. Bill, um, remember Bill painted Bill the hawk? Bill Davis. Bill Davis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He never had a. You know, I said he, you're going to be a hard guy to paint because you're a draftsman <laughs> and they want lines <laughs> like so. Said, We're going to be free and easy. So. But he was a great guy. It was hanging in the community center one day, and I said, I love birds of prey, and the next day it ended up at my office. But you taught him how to paint it. Right, it right. It's great. Right, yeah. well, what would you tell someone looking for a, a facility for senior living for themselves or for a loved one? I mean, you've lived at the home, you've lived in California, been all over the place. So if somebody was looking for, for a facility like Springfield Masonic Community, what would you tell them? I've never thought much about it. I would say, you know, number one, People leaving their home, their families, and that sort of, they're leaving something. So they want to come to a place where they can feel like they're getting something. And I would say probably this older people's security, a quiet place, uh, a place that offers all kinds of amenities where they want to paint or do woodworking or whatever. And that's what, uh, and of course, having lived uh, within two miles of Masonic Home, I was familiar with it. That was always Sugar Grove Hill to, when we were kids, <laughs> we used to come out and play baseball down where the uh, Alzheimer's unit is now. Really? They had a baseball diamond. We used to play baseball there, yeah. Really? So anyway, I was familiar with the Masonic Home, and I knew right away, and my mother living here, that this was a place for us. So that's, that's what I'm looking for, security and safety and a place that you feel like you're home, and it certainly offers that. Well, Don, thanks a lot for joining us. Okay, sure. Thanks a lot. It was very great hearing your story, and it's been a pleasure to see how much you've enjoyed living and teaching others to the art and, uh, and all the community members over the last few years. So thanks a lot. I also want to thank our viewers for tuning in today. Be sure to check out our show each month as we take a closer look at senior living today and answer the questions you want to know. If you have any specific questions you'd like to see answered on this show, send your questions to omhmarketing at ohiomasonichome.org or give us a call at 937-505-8405. You can also check us out on Facebook, our Facebook page to see current events and happenings at all of our campuses. If you'd like more information on campus living options for you or a loved one, give us a call at the number on the screen. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to having you back each next month where we'll be discussing in depth all of the financial questions you may have and how to plan for your future if you decide to move into a senior living community. Thanks for watching.